If you're starting out learning Python, as with any programming language, console applications or terminal applications are going to be one of the main points of emphasis for you. On one end of the spectrum, you have the full graphical user interface applications of the type that you're very familiar with if you use a Windows or a Mac OS PC. Closely related to GUI applications are web applications, which are growing more and more popular. And depending on your age, you might be more or less familiar with applications on the other end of the spectrum, terminal user interface applications or TUI applications, as well as command line interface applications or CLI applications. And what TUI or CLI applications might lack in visual appeal, they usually make up for it in terms of utility. Python has several packages and modules that facilitate the creation of console applications like TUI and CLI applications. And one of these is Click, and that's what we'll be looking at today. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and start up my editor, Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code is uh, free for download. Uh, it's available for multiple platforms. I'm going to start up uh, screencast mode. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start up a new project folder as well. Let's call this one Click, since we're learning Click. And go ahead and start a new file, main.py. Just to get things started off, let's do a hello world. I have the Python extension installed, so I'm going to use the main snippet. Just defining a main function and print hello world. And that should work. I'm going to open up the menu again. We're going to run this Python file in the terminal. We should see Hello World, which we do. How do we adapt this to click? Well, it's pretty simple. I'm going to go ahead and put an import statement at the beginning. Save. Right away, we notice a problem. Uh, import click has an error because I didn't install click. Before I install click, I'm going to actually start up a new virtual environment. So this is the recommended way of uh, managing dependencies if you're starting a new Python project where you're going to be uh, installing packages and modules and such. Um, we don't want to clutter up our main Python installation. We want to manage that by putting all that stuff in a virtual environment. So I actually consolidate all my virtual environments uh, in a particular directory um, here in the VNV directory. By the way, I'm using PowerShell. So if some of this uh, syntax confuses you, don't worry. These steps will work exactly the same way if you like using Bash or uh, any other shell of your choice. All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and start up a new virtual environment right here. I'm going to call it Click. So what a virtual environment does is it installs a kind of secondary Python installation on your computer. Um, and uh, you load it by using a command a lot like this. We're going to do Click scripts activate activate.ps1 because uh, I'm using PowerShell um, so what that did it changed the prompt of my integ integrated terminal at the bottom there and uh, basically if we run get command Python Now we can see if we run Python in the integrated terminal right now, it's actually going to run the Python that's been installed in this directory. All right, now we're going to go ahead and uh, install uh, Click. Click is installed. Well, we have one more step to go. We've got to tell Visual Studio Code to use this virtual environment instead of the main system Python, the default uh, installation of Python. We can do that in one of two ways. Um, one way is we can click this down here where it shows you which interpreter you're using, uh, the Python 3.8.5. And we can go into the file system and specify the virtual environment that we just created. The python.exe um, will be in this folder, in the scripts folder, uh, right next to the activate script. Once we do that, we see that the import click statement no longer has uh, the error, the squiggly underline, and we are good to go. So how do we in, how do we fully implement a hello world in click? Very simple. We're going to attach a decorator to the main function, and once again, we're going to run it. And there we go. 
Let's continue to develop our example by parameterizing the world in Hello World. What I'd like to do is uh, be able to pass in a name from the command line when I invoke this script. I'd like to be able to pass in a name like Jasper and have it say Hello Jasper rather than Hello World. How do we do that? Well, this is one, one area where click shines. I'm going to add a second decorator here, click.argument. And I'm just going to specify the name of the variable that's going to contain uh, the, the argument that we're going to pass in. So we'll just put name. Um, so we specify it as a string up here, and you know that's going to become the identifier of the actual variable uh, that's passed into the into the function itself. So we'll put name here, and uh, now we're going to uh, change this to a formatted string and uh, surround this with uh, curly braces and put name in there. Um, so now uh, any, any argument that we pass in from the command line in, in invocation of the script should be reproduced by, uh, should, be, should be placed within this formatted string. And there we go. We can add some additional functionality to our project here by um, adding yet another decorator. As you can tell, Click is big on decorators. Um, we're going to specify an option. And uh, we're going to go ahead and, you know, uh, specify uh, a number option. Uh, similar to the Click argument, um, this string is going to specify the name of the actual, uh, the identifier of the actual variable. So we'll put in number in here. Um, in this case, for option, we actually need to specify a data type. So type will be int. All right. And uh, what we'll do with this number is that we'll uh, put this into a loop that will repeat this message n number of times or number number of times. All right. So uh, the invocation would be like this. Uh, Python main.py jasper dash dash number and we'll put three. As we can see, we can now specify an option from the command line and uh, enhance our, our functionality with that option. Now one of the interesting things about Click is that it allows you to incorporate progressive help messages. If we put ourselves in the shoes of an end user, uh, maybe they're not familiar with this script, um, they could pass in the dash dash help parameter out of the box, uh, Click tries to provide some sort of assistance on what you can do with the script. All right, so we have the dash dash number right here with the data type required. And it also uh, gives you some additional usage tips uh, as far as what type of argument it's looking for. So we can pass in options as well as an argument. It did all this dynamically from the way that we actually constructed the script using these decorators. So if we want to provide a more helpful uh, message, actually we can incorporate just a simple doc string. So the first uh, string that we specify uh, within a function is known as a doc string. Um, and it's typically done as a block, as a block style doc string. Um, so if we put in a help message over here, save, if we run the command again with dash dash help, we can see the help message is actually provided. So this is how we can incorporate progressive help um, at various levels. If we have a very complex command line utility that we're designing, we can incorporate this type of, uh, these type of help messages very easily. And we can actually do that with the uh, options themselves, not just the, uh, not just the functions, but uh, in line with, for example, this click dot option, we can attach a help message, for example, uh, help message here. If we run it again, we can see that this string that we provided here shows up as the help message from this parameter. This is how we can improve the end user's experience using our application. All right, we've developed this uh, hello world example far enough. Let's go ahead and start a new file weather.py and I'm going to go ahead and hide some of the extra stuff in the UI just so we can concentrate on the script a little bit more. I'm going to compose something very similar to the hello world. So another interesting thing is how do we implement enumeration functionality? Meaning how are we able to specify that the input from the user can only be of can only be certain values? Um, 
So we've we've managed to process an int input as well as a string, but what if we only had uh, specific values that we wanted to accept from a user? Well, we can do that um, as I'm about to show you. Let's go ahead and implement an option. This time the type is going to be click.choice. Okay, click.choice will accept a list and we can specify uh, all, the all the available choices uh, within these parentheses as members of the list. We'll specify members uh, including sunny, rainy, and snowy. So we'll be describing weather. In the main function we need to take in those values and then we'll print uh, a formatted string I love it when it when the weather is um, weather like that. All right. Once we do that, we'll open the integrated terminal again, and we'll run weather.py with sunny weather. I think I forgot a colon here. I always forget that, and we have double quotes here. That's no good, very sloppy. But we finally got there. I love it when the weather is sunny. Now what happens if we try to put something else in here like uh, cloudy? Well, we get an error because click is going to enforce that uh, the input from the user can only be of certain types. Um, if we ask for help at this level, um, well, we didn't incorporate a help message in the option, but over here, um, we can see that there are only specific values accepted for the weather option. A final topic I'd like to cover before we end the video is command groups. So with click, we can also implement the functionality that you might have seen, might have seen on other uh, command line utilities like uh, Git or NetShell, where various options and subcommands are available only to certain command groups. So for example, if we were to run uh, git init, uh, and you know, if you're not familiar with Git, it's the kind of standard version control software that's used across the software development industry. Um, I don't. Have, this isn't actually a Git repo, so I can double check that by running Git status. Uh, we can see it's not a Git repository. If I wanted to start one, I could do one with Git init. I don't want to do that at the at the at the moment. But if it was a Git repository, I could then add files to the repository by using git add. And various options and subcommands are available to each of these uh, command groups. Um, and this is a way to organize functionality for complex command line utility suites. We can actually implement this type of thing within Click by using uh, groups. Now, sometimes it can be kind of challenging to think of interesting toy scenarios for the purpose of learning for some of these more advanced topics, but uh, one th I think I found something. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna have uh, a kind of a restaurant script, all right? So we're gonna start very similarly to you know the scripts that we had before. So this is pretty much how we started all of our other scripts, okay? Um, but if we're gonna implement groups, if we're going to implement groups with click, uh, we need to have a discussion of what this entry point is and why it's why it's uh, why it's important. Um, so this loop is basically how Python uh, separates functionality for modules, which are imported, versus scripts, which are run, uh, you know, uh, on command, uh, interactively, typically. Okay. So what this does is if uh, this module, if this file is loaded as a main script, meaning that the user end user wants to run this as a script, then run the logic that's in the main uh, in the main function that's been defined in the main function. So basically, this is called the entry point. Okay, this is a kind of this is a concept in uh, software development development more generally. But in Python, it's kind of been calcified into this structure. Um, so in, if we're going to define command groups, then we're actually going to change this main one and we're going to change the decorator up here. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to define this decorator as group and then we're going to change the name of the main function to CLI. 
We're going to change that in both places. So now the the entry point. So let's pretend we're implementing a command line menu system for a restaurant. Okay. Um, so restaurants typically serve the same dishes uh, no matter the time of day, lunch or dinner. Um, so we're going to implement a kind of toy implementation to see how we can organize commands into groups and how we can uh, share the same uh, command with more than one group. So actually before we get to the commands we're going to do a subgroup. We'll call this lunch. We'll have another subgroup. Both of these are using the Clee object as a decorator. We'll call this dinner. And now what we'll do is we'll define a command to serve a burger. Now once we do this, we're going to have to attach this command to both of these groups. So basically, this burger function will show up in both the dinner and lunch groups. The way we do that, we're going to call lunch.addCommand. We're going to pass it the burger function. And we're going to duplicate this line and do the same thing for dinner. So now let's see what we come up with when we run this. Um, Python restaurant.py. Uh, we forgot a colon up here. Try it again. Click presents us with two command groups, dinner and lunch. If we repeat this with dinner, then we can see that we have the burger subcommand available under the dinner group. And we just ordered a burger for dinner. Now let's try lunch. As we can see, the same function shows up as a subcommand for the lunch group. And we had a burger for lunch as well. Now there is actually a second way to associate commands to command groups, but I haven't figured out a way to get it to reuse the same function. So uh, let me show you what I mean. So instead of click.command, we're actually going to directly associate this with, for example, let's do lunch.command. So you see, I'm going to comment both of these lines out. All right, so before we were associating uh, this burger function with the lunch command group, uh, down here with this method with the add underscore command method we were passing it that function but now we're going to directly associate it by um, decorating it uh, with the group um, so now if we run it uh, it should work but we won't be able to du we well let's see what let's see what happens all right so we're going to run this script again and we, uh, just to double check, we decorate it with the lunch command, so it should be available under lunch. And there's a burger, and let's order a burger, and we can enjoy a burger. Now if we do dinner, well first of all, both lunch and dinner do appear, but if we do dinner, there's really nothing available. Now we can implement a second copy of the burger function, If we save and then run this again, now burger shows up and we can order a burger. But one thing we cannot do is we cannot double up these decorators on the same function. So if I take this and double decorate one of these and comment the other burger function out and attempt to run this, we're going to get an error. Okay, so unfortunately, if you want to reuse the same the same function in more than one command group, you're going to have to use this method, which is, um, uh, well, let's erase this, uncomment it. We'll change this decorator back to click and open up the terminal again. And now we're able to order burgers for lunch or for dinner and for lunch. So that's all I got for you today. I appreciate the time out of your day that you've provided to uh... <laughs> I appreciate the time that you've uh, allotted to watching this video and I hope to see you soon. Thank you.